So as well as a space elevator, yeah. there's loads of other ideas in, that include like these kind of tethers or, or cables, but that, that, that don't actually necessarily have to be as long or like fixed to the ground, fixed to an asteroid or whatever. Yeah. Like so, skyhooks is one of the things people have been talking about. Yeah, I, so I've heard of that, and it sounds a little bit to me. Uh, have you seen the Dark Knight? Yeah, 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 yeah. You yes, know when he's, he, I know it's called which is called Skyhook in the Dark Knight. Is it? I'm pretty sure Possibly. it's called Skyhook. It might be, yeah. And he just like puts a little balloon up, and the plane comes over, catches him, catches him, and that was a real thing. Yeah, they like actually Fulton systems. They were designed. Yeah, yeah. Um, back in the day, as a potential way to evacuate like personnel from, you know, hot zones. Yeah. Uh, anyway, it's a bit like that. Yeah. In in it sort of. But it's to get into space, right? So yeah, it has like what does it have? Like a big cable hanging down from. Yeah, there's a big cable hanging down from like a like a an object that's that's orbiting at orbital velocity, yes. and the cable is like hanging down into the upper atmosphere. Yeah. So there's like two two types. There's like rotating and non-rotating. There are non-rotating ones. You have this cable hanging down. Right. Into the, into the upper atmosphere, and you launch like your supersonic, but suborbital aircraft at it, and then you t- you attach your payload to the bottom of that cable. And then that gets uses that to drag it into orbit. Right. That's a non-rotating one. Okay. Then the rotating ones. It's rotating. It, the the like, cable's rotating, the whole thing. So like, it's orbiting, but it's also rotating. So one end of it drops down into the atmosphere, and that basically means that it's it traveling. Down, at a mu- it? It tra- it's traveling at a much slower relative speed to the ground than the one that's just screaming. If you get it right, yeah, it's like going with it, and so yeah. it almost stops. Yeah, it's just. Yeah, it's some arc that basically means that at the point that it's at its lowest, the end of that cable, it's almost stationary with respect to the ground. So then you hook something. So to then it. you hook something to it at that moment, and then <laughs> with some high altitude thing. Or yeah, whatever. you have to launch. Yeah, like a plane or something, like a like a real high velocity, high altitude plane. So you've already got the problem of getting a, an air breathing plane to lift up whatever object this is. But then that we, we you know it's yeah. got to be a fast. Well, if it's I suppose if it's rotating, then. Although with the rotating ones, there's still a relative speed to the ground. It doesn't actually, it's not actually like stationary. No, or but it's it, nowhere near as fast though. Because it's nowhere near it's like as fast. Max something to catch up with it. Yeah, 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 yeah. But it's still like it's still it's still fast. Is it? Even with the rotating one, it's still like max. <coughs> so you need a hypersonic plane. Potentially. Yeah, like the, the, the non-rotating ones, you have to go to like max fifteen or something ridiculous. Whereas Jesus. whereas these ones, it would be like max max five or something. Okay, you know, so like it's sky still it's, territory. Yeah, it's still fast. You still yeah. need to be going real fast. Um, but then once you're stuck on the bottom of it then you just climb up it like you would uh, oh you climb up it yeah like you would uh, or you um, just stay on the end and get like swung oh yeah, in yeah with the rotating one I think you just get swung into orbit but with the non-rotating one I think you have to climb it like like because uh, it doesn't do anything you, just, it, you know it's just ro- it's just orbiting the earth as a cable which is yeah. a really weird thought yeah, it's it had to be like thought. super heat resistant and stuff the bit that's sticking in the atmosphere and like why would that have to be super heat resistant well because it's sticking into the atmosphere moving at ridiculously high speeds oh because it's like hit, hit yeah okay yeah, some part of it's moving friction. really fast yeah that seems nuts yeah it's a nuts idea but uh, apparently the f- sort of physics of it check out yeah sure I, um, I don't know anything about that particularly but I mean it's been talked about as an yeah. idea yeah um, obviously it's just hypothetical yeah yeah yeah, yeah, um, yeah yeah it's not been taken as seriously as far as I can tell as a space elevator a space elevator which is crazy when you think about what a space elevator is yeah well, there seems to be there seems to be more talk and more sort of plans and more just general buzz about space elevators than yeah. these skyhook things as far as I can tell from just you know having a bit of a read around yeah. stuff I mean, it's, you know, maybe that's not yeah. true a skyhook's like the non-rotating kind of at least sort of like halfway between a space plane and a space elevator because you kind of need both, or well, not space plane. But you need a high, you need a high, a a high hypersonic altitude, a hypersonic jet thing plane, as yeah. well as having your cable. So it's a bit of both. Whereas mm. a space elevator, you're going full on for the whole structure, like yeah, big just winch cable it up. thing. Yeah. yeah, it's an interesting idea. Yeah, sure. Um, yeah, and there's plenty more sort of structure based ways of getting into space. People have talked about, it, and <laughs> yeah. they get they get nuts. <laughs> yes, they get absolutely. I've crazy. heard of a few of them. Um, let, let, okay, before we dive into the nut stuff, let's start with the kind of less crazy but still a bit crazy ones. That company, that Canadian company, Thoth. Oh yeah. Right. I've yeah. recently secured like a patent. Yes. For what they call a space elevator, which isn't really a space elevator. It's, it's just a, a really tower, really right? high tower. Right. Um, like twenty kilometers or something high tower. Okay, that, that's it's not that high. That's really high. I mean, for it's a really tower. high for a tower. That's like tw- twenty times the size of the. 
the Burj Khalifa. Yeah. Well, more than that. Actually. Yeah, I mean, only, Burj Khalifa is like what eight fifty or something like that. Eight seventy yeah. yeah, meters. So it's a beast of a thing. So that's huge. That's absolutely what. And it's got a stand of like its own inf- weight. Oh, is this the inflatable thing? Yeah. So it's sort of. So unlike a space elevator, where you don't need to support the weight of the cable on the ground because the whole thing's like self-support, it's tensile. So it's, you know, the asteroid at one end or the, yeah. or the counterweight it's at like one end. It's like extensional rather than compressional. Yeah. Or whatever. yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Whereas this is just it's just got to be able to sit on its own weight, so it's all inflatable and stuff like that. So they pump it with presumably like super light gases in, like guess. Li- like you know hydrogen, helium, helium probably. Yeah. Um, they've and... actually secured the patent to build the, well the patent for it, which doesn't really mean anything. Just means uh, that they. Wouldn't you have to have like super strong? No, oh, no, maybe not. Like very lightweight and strong, um, inflatable things to kind of have balloons at that altitude that don't. Yeah. Yeah, I, I don't know. They've secured a pan to do it, right? Yeah, yeah. So they have, and the point of it is that you have like a runway on the top, and you you huh. launch space planes from the runway. How, so how so do you get the you winch the space planes yeah, up. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Winch space planes up all the equipment or people or whatever you want to take into orbit you winch to the top of this tower and then they launch these orbital planes the orbital mm. vehicles from the top of the tower and because you're already 20 kilometers you don't need to go through the thickest like densest part of the atmosphere yeah which is always the, the worst bit right yeah, yeah 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 um and, and apparently that it, it reduces your fuel requirements like 30 percent no no 70 percent <laughs> from rocket from chemical rocket launches so you save 30 well, percent of fuel um, it's huge, but I mean, you've got to build a twenty-kilometer high, build a 20 km high structure, mm. inflatable structure. Can that survive like storms and stuff? I Presumably, it can know. survive. You can't build. Obviously, it's got to. It absolutely has to. Yeah, right? it, must, it must. You would. Yeah, you would have thought they'd build. It. Yeah, of course. It, of course, it would have to. I mean, they obviously it'd think ha- that it it's the to answer to, to the build, world's problems. Yeah, of space. up to like hurricanes, it would have to survive. Yeah, or anything. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, what do you? Can you imagine? Imagine okay, so imagine this tower exists. What would it look be like if you stood on top of it? Would you be able to see the curvature of the Earth? Yeah, yeah. From twenty kilometers. 20. Yeah, yeah. Surely it'd be. Re- Wait, what is twenty kilometers in miles? Like miles. Fifteen. Fit sure. twelve. Sure, maybe? something like that. Yeah, somewhere between twelve and fifteen. Yeah. How high do commercial like jets fly? Well, I thought like thirty thousand feet. What's that? No, I think uh, it's like six miles. Ah. Oh. Okay, so it's twice that. Yeah. Okay, so you probably would see... Yeah, you would. It would look awesome. Yeah, so it's twice at 60,000 feet, and I think things like U2s, you can see the curvature of the Earth, and they yeah. fly around 60, 70, 80,000 feet, something like that. So you would be able to see the curvature of the Earth, you would think. Yeah. Or at least a slight curvature. You could, like, base jump off of it. Oh, someone, someone would probably do that. Yeah. How, how high did that guy in the balloon go? The oh, red like 100 and guy? something thousand feet. Oh, Jesus, right. It was, okay. it was mental. Yeah. And like the Joseph Joseph Kissinger, was it? The guy before that yeah. in the sixties that had the record was like ninety something thousand, I think. Yeah, okay. Or maybe even a hundred. So above that. Yeah. I think it, yeah, it's higher. But yeah, I mean they look like the the Red Bull guy, what's his name? Can't remember. I can't remember. He he but the b- video's that. B. B- 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 but oh Baumgartner. Yeah. Felix Baumgartner. Yeah. That's yeah. It. So he I mean the videos of that, he looks like he's just jumping from space. Like that's what it looks like. Yeah. <laughs> Imagine that. That's absolutely terrifying. When he, he, this is a tangent again. But when you see him disappear, he dis he he goes like out of view so quickly. Yeah, and apparently there's no sensation of falling. Oh, because there's no air. Hardly. Yeah. But doesn't he have like yeah, that r- like acceleration? Yeah, you must have that sensation of falling. I just remember I remember He's reading something from Joseph Joseph. Is it Joseph? The Kissinger guy. Yeah, is it Kissinger or Kitting? Anyway, yes, the the other guy who had the record before. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You must have some sensation of falling because that before that you're basically going up in a balloon and then you jump out. Mm. So you must have some sensation of falling, but there's no rushing air. Yeah, he's just like it's just all still. Well, he just started silent. spinning, didn't he? Yeah, he did. Yeah, yeah. Like crazy. <laughs> yeah, so maybe people jump off this giant uh, tower. <laughs> That's not going to be the main use of it. No. <laughs> would, would, would you, that's the question. Though. Would you, could you ever do like a tourist trip up to the top of it? Maybe. Like, is it like a like a restaurant at the top? You know, like an obvious, like a sky deck. Yeah. You just sit as like a hotel at the top. Presumably, I mean, if they'll probably run trips up there, you tourists. might have to stay up there for a while waiting for your, you know, your 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 flight to, yeah. to arrive. Or, the top of it's all built in with like accommodation and and. It must be hard to maintain and sort out aircraft mm. at the top of that yeah um, you need so much equipment up there yeah at the top of this tower 
which is like an inflatable tower. <laughs> I mean, obviously, it's going to be built strong enough to 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 hold the weight up. But I mean, I've got to be honest. Yeah. Knowing abs, like knowing very little about this at all, it doesn't seem very likely. <laughs> <laughs> we'll see. Seventy percent reduction. It's going to be like no, no, thirty percent reduction. Right. Okay. It reduces it to seventy percent the requirements for right launches. Sorry, I say that in a stupid way. It's yes. a thirty percent reduction of fuel. That seems like. I mean that's that's significant. It's still a lot. It's still, like, it's still a hell of a lot. Yeah. Um, is it, it depends how much it costs to build. It's going to cost like a couple of billion or something at mm. least more than that probably. I don't know how much mm. two it's towers cost. Be a lot. Be a lot. I mean, it won't be as much as a space elevator, but you've got to wonder if it, if people would think that's ever worth it for thirty percent reduction in fuel when you. Well, it's not if you do the maths and it works out being yeah. worth it. Over, it, you get your payback over a certain period of time. If there's enough yeah. launches going, then maybe. Uh, yeah, even even if, um, yeah, you might find that rockets get to a point where they're really reliable and reusable, and space yeah. planes are also in flight and reusable and great. But then this thing still manages to just have a margin over them. So yeah, and then and in that case, it will get it. built. Yeah, which will be like easily the highest structure in the world. Yeah, by, by miles. Literally by miles. Yeah. Yeah. Unless we have like huge vertical cities by that point. Yeah. Well, well, who knows? Maybe inflatable skyscrapers. Yeah. Um, so there are more crazy versions. Oh yeah. <laughs> to get into space, so that's that's kind of a let. I w- I would say that's not that. That's fairly conventional idea. Yeah, it's just build a really really high tower. There are real outside the box like nuts. Yeah, things. like dynamic structures. This yeah. whole this whole like umbrella term for of uh, things that that are really really big structures, and part of the way that they hold themselves up is through kinetic energy. <laughs> So, yes. so space fountain is like one of the classic ones. That right. Talk about. So, now, I've I, again, I've heard of it. I and it's got some sort of stream of particles that go exactly. Up, right? Yeah. That keeps some sort something yeah. in in orbit. How does it work? Not in orbit, but it, it's it's like a it's like a really high tower again, which at the top of which you could have at like an orbital height, at like either just like below either either just really really high out out, out of Earth's atmosphere where you can launch things into orbital velocity from, or you could make it as high as. Um, the space elevator, you know, and put something in, in geosynchronous orbit from the top of it. So it's just a... But isn't there, like, a stream of... Sorry, geostationary orbit is the word. <laughs> geostationary orbit. Geosynchronous... Yeah, it means the same thing. But anyway, carry on. Yeah. The, the stream of particles, though, isn't... Can it get, like... I thought... It's not... It's two... I thought there were two structures involved in it. Like, one where the particles go up and one they come down, or something like that. Yeah, basically. Okay. So how does it work, then? So the concept of it... Imagine... Imagine you can, like... Imagine you have like a hose, a water hose. This is just the concept of it, right? Yeah. The way that the, sure, the, yeah, the concept yeah. works. Have like a ho- like a water hose. I've got a hose. And you're firing it into the air. Right. And you have like a like a like a board or like a plate or something that's tied in the corners to the ground. If you are accurate enough and oh. you have a constant stream of water, you can hold that board up. <laughs> yeah. Right? That's a cool idea. So the class, that's it. That's what that's what space fountain is. What's the par- what's the particles made of? I don't know. Just like some. So the, so yeah. So the, the way the way that it works, you have these magnetic particles that you accelerate oh, using right. super powerful like electromagnets yeah. through like a vacuum tube, um, and you accelerate them up to the top, and then the the kinetic energy is transferred into the top of the structure where they're cut, they they're bent back round and then fed oh, back round towards so the ground. So it's a big fat magnet. Yeah, yeah, basically. But the kinetic energy of them travelling upwards is what holds the thing up. <laughs> is that the, from... Because, yeah, okay. It's just like constant game of like keepy-uppies, you know, just like... Keep it up! <laughs> but how does the kinetic energy get tracked? Because it's not hitting into it, presumably. No, no, it's just through the... So it must be a magnet. Ma- it's a it magnet, It travels yeah. around yeah, it and that yeah. keeps it They're up. They're bent using a magnet, which then takes... The kinetic energy is transferred upwards into that magnet. That's nuts. Yeah. And then, again, like a space elevator or whatever, then you can just run climbers up and down it. Um, what Climbing what? The outside of so you, this this stream of particles yeah of like project is projectiles yeah right the stream of projectiles will be inside like a tube right contained by magnetic fields and on the outside of that you could have your climbers and things climbing up climbing up and down or whatever oh right okay yeah. so the, the actual structures themselves are held up by the magnetic yes things as so well. it's just a way of getting around the fact that you can't build a like over a certain height towers yeah. just become too weak to hold themselves up under their own gravity like under their own weight they yeah so collapse. the, the compression yeah so this around. is a way of getting around that you just fire stuff really hard at the top of it to keep it up <laughs> that's <laughs> mental that's so that's a cool idea I like that a lot but obviously I, I mean a space elevator is one thing that sounds 
that sounds mental. I mean, it's just so, so much can go wrong with it. Like the fact that it needs it's like a, told, a constant yeah. supply of like extremely yeah. high power to keep it. Oh up. shit! The power, <laughs> all the backup generators are dead, or the particles of whatever something's happened to them. Yeah, that massive magnet's just gonna like fall. <laughs> it's gonna fall. Yeah, it relies on that constant, <laughs> the constant stream of particles. I'd be like that. Um, you know, an independence day with a giant like city killing ship just like crash smashes lands. into the ground <laughs> <laughs> apparently it would take ages for it to fall though because yes there's so much there'll be so much like kinetic energy in it that it wouldn't just like immediately all the particles would stop it would no. just continue it would have some sort of screaming around for thing. a while yeah and it would take ages to fall so you could probably evacuate it but it would be, <laughs> be a lot of a money just, just disappearing well that's a cool idea it's a cool idea and there's another similar one called a launch loop okay I actually I don't know anything about that. So la- launch loop is it's um it's not a stream of particles this time. Instead, you have like a like a looped um chain almost, right? Okay. And and if you run a chain really high, really high velocity, it arcs up one side of it. So if you can Does contain it? one one end, apparently, so you can contain one end and then just under the in the direction that it's running really fast, it'll like arc up. So you can have this thing running. It would describe like a parabolic. Curve oh, right, okay. That then the the top of which is in orbit, essentially, or uh, orbital Bloody orbital hell. altitudes. So it's a similar dynamic structure. It's a thing. similar it's dynamic structure. By kinetic energy. Exactly, and and it's just yeah, kinetic energy is what keeping it up. And if it if it was to lose power, it would fall, probably with devastating consequences. <laughs> That's the thing with all these things; they have so much energy going into them that you know if some if there was like a some kind of failure somewhere along that chain, all that kinetic energy is going to go somewhere. Probably back into the ground. <laughs> <laughs> Just cuts the earth in half, <laughs> like an egg. But people have people are saying that you could get like if you could build one of these things, you could reduce costs of getting mass into into orbit down to like like between th- three hundred and three dollars per kilo. <laughs> Whoa! I know, I know, I know. That's mad cheap. Three dollars per kilo. Yeah, it's yeah. dirt cheap. The Skyline was. I could, I could pay to put some stuff in orbit <laughs> per kilo. Yeah, it's like I think the Skylons. Um, one of the predictions, one of the, was like six hundred and fifty dollars per kilo. I mean, that is ridiculous compared to rocket prices. Like ri- ridiculously cheap. Yeah, but how does it compare to like a, to like SpaceX's projected reusable rocket payload um, cost? It, it's that somewhat comparable. I think the, the so the the reusable is a totally different tangent. That's fine. I think if they said like between five and seven million Gwyn- Gwyn Shotwell may have said that at some point five for to launch. seven million for a launch yeah um, I don't know quite how that I th- I'm pretty sure that stacks up as actually possibly being a bit less yeah than 650 dollars per you know. but anyway um, yeah so that that launch loop thing yeah 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 it's like, like could potentially be cheap but obviously building I mean it, it, hell, back to yeah. the same old problems of like where's the material going to yeah. come from blah 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 like how the hell are we going to build one of these things yeah. Um, and the fact that it just seems crazy to have both of those th- ideas having a structure that's, that's maintained purely through it. this, this kinetic energy is what holds it, holds, holds it up like that seems yeah. mental yeah yeah no it does seem a bit nuts the, it's kind of like juggling like eventually it's, it, it's exactly what it is yeah yeah eventually something's going to come down <laughs> yeah yeah unless unless maybe something like revolutions in, in power like fusion power or something will will make this this kind of thing become less like sci-fi and more more maybe more realistic i don't know well, just with the amount of um, electromagnetic energy you need yeah to... constantly supplying it and redundant you could maybe be cheap and easy to have redundancies and things yeah. you need to be so many redundancies to have these things working yeah 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 oh yeah yeah another thing that backups leads backups and backups and backups oh yeah oh yeah 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 so another thing that leads on from them is this idea of an orbital ring orbital ring which is another dynamic structure Right. So this is basically like having... So you have like a cable or a chain or even just like a stream of particles at uh, orbiting the Earth in a ring. So let's oh, forget right. the stream of particles because it's easy to imagine it like a ring, like a, like, a, like a cable. What about like a hula hoop that you like r- roll around sure. your waist? Sure, like that. <laughs> rolling, rolling around the Earth, except in a totally circular orbit. Yes. But the, it's orbiting, it's moving faster than the required orbital velocity. So there's like extra force, extra kinetic energy, right, in the cable. 
yes. that is required to maintain its its orbit. But it maintains its orbit because it's kind of holding on to itself. Yes. It's only a certain size. Exactly. But you can then put stations around it that oh, like yeah. that stay there through you know like oh, magnetically can, uh, or something. So they're not touching the cable, but, oh. and they can be used to accelerate the cable and stuff like that as well. It's like looped like ring stations or something around oh, the right. cable at different points, which because they can use this extra kinetic energy created by the extra velocity to hold themselves up so they're not orbiting and if they if the ring just disappeared they just fall to earth right but they're held there by this this fast by rotating the magnet, yeah, whatever, yeah. and then you drop cables from them to the surface of the earth oh so they're like space elevators so they're like space elevators it's just that it's not held up by so it doesn't need to be anywhere near as long as a space elevator oh really it, so could, be, it could be low low earth orbit ah that's cool. And then you have a ring, but like you just a ring-shaped build... space station in a, in low Earth orbit. You just well. need to build a s- sort of ring structure that's the circumference of the Earth. Yeah, more than that. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. And, and appa- apparently, these things you can like you can process them, so you can they don't have to be over the equator. You could like move it, uh-huh. so you can move it all around the entire world and like any like meridian you know any yeah line around the earth you could put it so you, you could essentially move it around and service anywhere on the earth because you have things. multiple ones so it's like yeah 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 that would look awesome you can and people talk about them it's like a mega them. that's like a dice it's bordering on like exactly a, a dice exactly it's exactly object. what it is and people talk about using them in this way like built so building like a uh like a a planet like, a, like an artificial planet yeah. above the surface of like jupiter or something like that Right at a distance at which the gravity would be one Earth, one Earth gravity. The whole thing is built on top of these orbital rings, which are moving fast enough. They're basically the kinetic energy again is keeping everything up, and you build like a system of plates on top of these things above the surface of something like Jupiter. People talk about it. so, talk so about like this. round Jupiter. You've got this encasing entire... Jupiter. <laughs> you wouldn't have to. You wouldn't have to do the whole planet. You could just do like a ring or like patches of it. You know, like built on top of these things and gradually fill them in and just like end up with this ball of. That's absolutely it's, nuts. Yeah, it's crazy shit. That's really that's cool though. I, I, th- I, th- I think, think the most concept of... of it. I like the. Co- yeah, obviously that's like far flung Dyson sphere sort of future yeah, stuff. Yeah. Um, but. The, the, uh, yeah the concept of like having a rotating structure in orbit that's kind of keeping itself out is mm. it's quite a cool idea it's actually. cool it's hard to get your head around it's hard to like kind of imagine exactly how that would work yeah of course but you could do it with a stream of particles or like a space fountain in like an enclosed tube that are moving faster than orbital velocity again that would do the same thing just like transferring that mm. energy um it doesn't need to do that to hold itself up but then you can that, the point is you mount things on it like yes. like space elevators or something yeah. that use that energy to stay up. Yeah. I wonder if you could detect I suppose that would be quite quite thin though. It's not gonna be that thick, the ring itself, right? Well, yeah, I don't I don't know. I don't, know. I don't yeah. Suppose. I don't really know. I was wondering if it's like something you could detect from like a distance with some sort of fancy telescope. For like, like orbital rings. Planets. Yeah. Yeah. No. I mean, they talk about obviously people talk about detecting Dyson spheres around stars, but mm, mm. that's different because obviously they're much bigger. Maybe if there's someone's built like one of these artificial planets around like a brown dwarf or something, you'd be able to detect it, <sighs> and you get all your heat from that as well. Yeah, it's just like build a giant. Yeah, you just on the inside of it, it's like a Dyson sphere, and yeah. the outside of it's your habitat. Yeah, it's like underfloor heating. Yeah, but, like, fancy. <laughs> Imagine that. Like you're just work. You essentially live on a planet which is feels like something like the Earth. But you know that under your feet it goes on forever, like kind of yeah, yeah it's much 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 bigger, massive. Um, unbelievably big. You, de- you had to like deconstruct planets to make this thing. Oh yeah, yeah, like dismantle like the matter of a solar system. Well, maybe not quite, but not far lots off. Of it. And to get yeah, around the- a brown dwarf, like and a safe distance from it and all that. Yeah, and <laughs> that you know that underneath your feet is like a star. <laughs> well, underneath our feet is a um, you know extremely hot core. Yeah, it's, it's not. True. It's not a star though. It's not a star. <laughs> No, that's okay. I like that. It's that's, cool. I like it, that. That's a very far flung. It's, it's very far flung. It's, it's very science fiction. I think. I think everything I just described is basically come from the right, like the guy who came up with the idea, not came up with the idea, but developed the idea of the orbital ring and like how it would actually work and the physics of it and stuff. Mm. Also, then went on to talk about all this stuff about um, building artificial planets on top of Jupiter and stuff. Oh, um, so it's all kind of come out of this guy's this guy's right. sort of imaginings. But it, it, it's worth chatting about because it's, it's yeah, a bit, yeah, it's a yeah. bit mad. Yeah. Five I like it. Stuff's awesome.